Woo! Finally! I'm able to finish this video that took me so long to film. Okay, it's time to get started. <laughs> Don't do this! This is one of the worst things that you can do when editing your videos. Let me tell you why. If you're currently editing a video project, I want you to pause for a minute and think about this. Where is your video going to end up? And by that I mean where are people going to watch it? Let's think about context for a minute. Maybe you're editing the classic YouTube video. People are going to watch it in computer screens or their phones or maybe in a big TV on their living rooms. Maybe your video will never be uploaded to the internet. Maybe it is just a video loop that will be watched in a company or a corporation. Maybe your video is a feature film and it is going to be watched by millions of people in movie theaters. I mean, the scenarios are endless, but here's my point. Depending on your needs, Perhaps you might want to change some settings in your sequence on your editing program that can significantly impact your editing experience for the best. So what is a sequence? So a sequence is this area right here where you do most of your editing work in Premiere Pro. And I don't know if you know this, but this little icon right here, this means that this is a sequence. So here you can rename your sequence or you can duplicate it or you can just delete your sequence but be careful because if you lose your sequence you're gonna be crying so if you have no sequences open uh, a little message is going to show up where it says uh, drop media here to create sequence so let's let's do that we're gonna drag this clip right here to this area and as you can see in the browser a new sequence is created. But Premiere Pro assumes that you want your sequence to have the same settings as the clip that you just dragged. But this might not be the best case for you. For instance, for my work, I need to export my videos always in 1080p, 24 frames per second. But I don't necessarily shoot at 1080, 24 frames per second. I actually shoot in 2K 60 frames per second. Why is that? I shoot in 2K because I like to have the extra pixels. It is actually double the amount of pixels. And I like that because in post I can zoom in in my video, in my shot, and I won't lose any quality or sharpness. And I shoot in 60 frames per second because for my B-roll I can slow down my footage and it will look cool in a 24 frames per second sequence. So what happens when I drag my 2K 60 frames per second clip to the sequence area? a new sequence is going to be created and this sequence is going to be 2k 60 frames per second but this is not what i need i need a 1080 24 frames per second sequence because that is what my final video will be and you might ask what's the problem with this can't you just export in 1080 24 frames per second later can't you just edit it like that the answer is yes, but you might want to reconsider this approach. There's many reasons for this, but for me, the main reason is CPU usage. For a 2K 60 frames per second sequence, my computer has to do the amount of work that a 2K 60 frames per second sequence requires. What does this mean? This means that it has to render more pixels at higher frame rates. So this means that the computer needs more resources in order to complete such task. So depending on the computer, this means that the fans will spin like crazy, or maybe the computer won't respond as fluid as you want. And the export times will increase like crazy because the computer is rendering for a more demanding sequence or a more demanding video. But instead of that, if I create the sequence that I need from the beginning, in my case, it is 1080p 24 frames per second the computer is only going to use the resources necessary to complete that sequence which is half the pixels slower frame rates and especially in older machines this will mean that you have an enormous difference in performance and maybe you will have a better experience overall so how do you do that here in the browser area you're going to right click let's go to new item sequence 
and in this dialog you're going to change the settings to match what your final video will be like so in my case i need here in the time base 24 frames per second the frame size is going to be 1920 by 1080 i'm going to uh, select display format 24 frames per second time code and finally here in the video previews i'm going to select 1920 by 1080 as well and if you do this regularly you might want to save these settings as a preset so we're gonna name the sequence 1080p 24 fps and we're gonna press ok and there you go we have a new sequence with the settings that we need that's great now when you drag a clip that has different settings than your sequence this is going to happen this dialog is going to appear and it says this clip does not match the sequence's settings change sequence to match the clip settings we're going to select keep existing settings because we want to keep the settings of our sequence which in my case is 1080p 24 frames per second so let's click here and this is what is going to happen my clip looks uh you know more zoomed in than normal it is going to appear larger than normal and this is because my clip is larger than the size of my sequence so how to fix this it is very simple we're just going to right click here in the clip and we're going to select set to frame size and here you go now the clip is going to match the size of our sequence so because this clip has double the resolution of or double the pixels than my sequence has if you see here in the properties of the video the scale has stepped down to 50 instead of 100 which was the original size but we just changed that to match the size of the sequence which is great so remember think about what your video will be like and plan accordingly your sequence settings and please don't kill your computer if you find this video useful please let me know in the comments down below i'll see you next time